All right, I'd like to start our session today with an acknowledgement of country. The University of Newcastle acknowledges the traditional custodians of the lands on which our campuses are located. The Waramai Nation and the Pambalong clan of the Awabakal Nation in Newcastle and Darkingjung people of Central Coast. We pay respect to elders past, present and emerging. We also acknowledge and pay respect to the other Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander nations from which our students, staff and community are drawn. All right, so I welcome the panel to join me on screen. Great. Hi, Jess. Hi. Hi. Thanks, everyone. So what I might do is just introduce myself. I'm Jess Rockabara. I'm the business support manager at Student Living um, and the business support team looks after finance, occupancy and admission, customer service and engagement. Nat. Hi everybody, I'm Natalie Perfett. I'm the General Manager of Student Living. We're really excited to welcome you and uh, your family members onto campus very shortly and really looking forward to uh, answering your questions in this session. Kasia. Hi, I'm Kasia. I'm the Customer Service Team Leader. Kai? Hi guys, I'm Kai. I'm Customer Service Representative as well as I used to live on campus as a residential mentor. And Kai's being humble, but he was also a resident of the year. So <laughs> thank you all for joining me today. Um, and for those of you uh, watching along from home, please just use the Q&A field at the bottom of your screen to ask any questions that you might have. Um, we'll obviously answer as many as we possibly can. Um, and also just feed through on some themes, I guess, that we've been seeing for the last little while. All right. So we'll just wait for some questions. And in the meantime, we might just talk a little bit about move-in day, which is this Saturday. So, Asia, I was wondering if you can tell us a little bit about what people might expect when they arrive on campus on Saturday? Hi, yeah, so we'll have um, two hubs kind of set up for move-in day, one at West Tower and one at Edwards Hall. Um, and you would have been told which one is the particular hub for where you're going, depending on what residence you're in. Um, so you can expect to meet most of our staff, your residential mentors, um, you'll get to meet your roommates. Um, hopefully everyone's moving in on the same day, so you get to meet them. We'll also have um, people such as security, so you get to meet the security team. Um, as well as the people from Student Central there, if you haven't got your student card already or anything. And then we'll also have some entertainment and some things like that happening as well. Oops, sorry, I was muted. Uh, thanks very much for that, Casey. Yeah, we've had a question come through around how does it work with guests on campus and registration through the portal. Um, Kai, I wondered if you would like to answer that for us, please. Yeah, so guests are registered to shoot through the student living portal. Um, however, we have a zero guest um, policy for the first week of whilst you're living here. Um, just whilst you're getting used to everything and meeting everyone else, we don't want um, other people who aren't maybe residents um, living here <coughs> as well. Yeah, great. And I guess in terms of registering through the portal, you would just go in and, and give the details of the person that you was, was planning to visit you. Um, we do ask this year that guests are registered regardless of the time of day that they're coming onto campus. Um, so yeah, more information will be shared with residents once, um, as Kai mentioned, the ResFest period has passed and we can welcome guests on. But I would also just say at this point that your friends and family are welcome to come with you on Saturday when, or next Wednesday when you're moving in to help you take stuff up to your room. Um, but yeah, we just ask that they leave in the afternoon. All right, so our next question is about the gym. Um, so Nat, I thought you might like to answer that as a, as a forum regular, um, how, the, how the gym works in terms of cost and membership. 
Absolutely. Although you might need to help me out with actual costs um, team. I'm fairly new to this role, guys, so bear with. Um, but yes, we have the forum here on site at Callahan campus. There's also a branch in the city and um, it's a membership. It's not a dollar a day, as I think I saw in the Q&A box, but there's a membership fee that is discounted for you guys as students. Does the, anyone else on the team have the exact details of cost? I don't know that we'd have that specific information because um, it is a little different for us being staff and what have you, but there is a lot, also a lot of information on the forum website. So I recommend that um, if you're interested and the forum from the Callahan campus um, residences is probably a five minute walk. So it's, it's super, um, super close and just give them a call if you wanted to set something up before you were to move on. Otherwise, when you're here, you can just walk across and meet the team and sign up. Yeah, they're super friendly. I'd recommend going over and having a look at the facilities as well. It's the only Olympic size um, indoor swimming pool in the region. So really lucky to have it. And it was newly renovated just at the end of last year. Yeah. Awesome. All right. So another question is, what should we do if we can't make move-in day? Casey, did you want to talk us through that? Sure. Um, so understandable, like people might have things planned or other commitments, they can't make it on move-in day. Um, so you're welcome to move in after your contract starts. Um, we just ask that you kind of let us know um, if it's during office hours, which is um, Monday to Friday, 9.30 to 4.30, you're welcome to just come anytime. But if it's outside those hours, um, let us know and we'll let you know what the after hours procedures are. And um, you'll have to, if it's after hours, we usually have after hours duty officers who are here to support residents um, and they can get you help checked in after hours as well. Awesome, thank you. So our next question is bus transportation to local shops provided during the ResFest period. Um, we don't have any set shuttles as such. However, we are on a relatively main road for Newcastle um, and the buses go in either direction. They will take you to um, a reasonably sized shopping centre. One way is Woolworths and Big W, the other way is Coles and Kmart um, and it's Either way, either direction, it's about a five minute bus trip. Uh, Kai, did you wanna talk a little bit about the first week in ResFest and what people can expect when they're on campus in that time? Yep, so from move-in day, you'll be introduced to your residential mentor um, and then they'll run some activities for the, throughout the next few days. Um, <clears throat> to get to know each other. And then as well as you'll have um, returning residents move in on the following Wednesday. And from then on, there's a ResFest period. So there's activities on campus um, to do to get to know each other. There's a sporting events and ev everything like that, um, as well as um, small little things with your, within your own uh, residence as well. So your RM and your, your residential mentor will keep you updated on those as well. So Kai, you, you raise an interesting acronym there with Residential Mentor or RM. Did you want to tell the guys a little bit about what, uh, what they can expect from their Residential Mentor or what, or what part Residential Mentors play in our community? Yep. So the Residential Mentors are your first port of call, call um, with anything. So any, anything that you have, what <clears throat> you stressed about or anything like that, the first point of call is your uh, residential mentor. Your residential mentor is go, go through two weeks of training um, throughout uh, mental health awareness and other things like that. And they can assist you in providing you the best avenues of where you need to go next. Um, they're also there to facilitate uh, small engagement um, activities within your block as well. Yeah, if, awesome. If, and we are, sorry. Yeah. Sorry, Jess. I was just going to say if I could add to that. Um, I'm really, really proud of our residential mentor program. We've got about just under 70 of them for this year and they really provide that peer-to-peer -peer support. So things that you may not feel um, confident in the first instance in coming straight to us as a student living team, they're a really good um, uh, support service to sort of sound them out and they get two full-on weeks of training to really help them in that role. So we've been doing that training this week and last week um, and they're just a, a wonderful part of the overall student living offering. 
Yeah, they sure are. And I guess, you know, we find a lot of people, especially our new residents, they move on. There's there's an element of homesickness there or, you know, un- being unsure and meeting new people. And the RMs are really, really well placed. Plus, they've been there themselves. So they know what it's like and they're really well placed to support our new residents through through that stage. All right. Um, our next question um, from out of state and we'll be arriving Saturday the 11th. Is everything needed to get set up at a residence? So we will be open um, obviously this weekend for our main move in and then for next weekend as well on the 11th and 12th. Um, so what we suggest that you do if you can't arrive on Saturday or during business hours next week is send us an email. So the best email address is studentliving at newcastle.edu.au. Um, and the team will then be able to provide you with the information that you need in terms of your check-in, if it is out of office hours. All right, so does everyone have their own mailbox? Casey, would you like to answer this question? Hi, yeah, um, so you don't have your own mailbox. Your mail gets delivered on campus. There's a campus mail centre. They sort all the mail that comes to the university broadly. And then anything that's for residents, they bring to the student living office um, and we hold it. So you get, you'll get an email advising you when your mail is ready to collect and the pickup times. Um, and then you come and see us during business hours and we can issue it to you and we'll hold it for a few days if you're not able to pick it up immediately. Yeah, and we've also got, in terms of for Callaghan residents, because I'm conscious we might have some Blue Gum residents as well for the Central Coast. Um, so Blue Gum will receive their mail in the student services area. And for our Callaghan residents, we also, as well as what Casey just mentioned, we have Australia Post boxes just outside the West residence. So if you would rather use parcel lockers, you're welcome to in there just outside. All right, how often is there transport between Callaghan campus and city campus, Kai? Yep, so the, the student accommodation have this own shuttle uh, bus stop right outside of North Tower. And the new, sh- new space shuttle um, runs every hour. So I think it starts at eight or seven, 10, 10 past seven, and then every hour from then. And I think that ramps up, right, Kai, during semester to once every half an hour. So yeah. um, once your studies get underway, that's a bit more frequent. Yeah, great. All right. So our next question is along the same lines as what we were talking about before. So we've got an exchange student um, who is awaiting visas which we completely understand and appreciate is is a lot for a lot of our residents to to move through before they can actually fly here so if you don't feel like you'll be here within the next week or so please just send us an email to studentliving at newcastle.edu.au again so that we can understand your specific situation and support you through that uh parking so Kai, as a resident or ex-resident, um, would you like to explain about the free car park 14 and perhaps the location of the residential car parks? Yep, so we have a few different residential car parks here on campus. So then there's one on one side of the, the river, lake, our bridge, um, which has which is close to Everett and the Four Towers. And then the other um, car park is near to Edwards Hall, International House, Barry Hennaban, and all of that, all your selfies as well. So car park 14, which is a free car parking, is actually located a bit further away from Edwards Hall. So a lot of residents tend to, if they're living in the Towers or in Everett, tend to get a residential parking because it's a lot more closer. As well as um, that, during off a university period, lots of students actually drive to campus here and park in car park 14 as it's free and then take the shuttle bus around campus. So it tends to fill, uh, fill up pretty quickly as well. Yeah, and I think the other element there, Kai, would be just um, being aware of your individual safety and security. Uh, so in terms of where you're parking your car and if you're working late, for example, you might want to attempt to park as close as possible to your residence. So that's the other thing that I would probably just consider um, when weighing up car park 14 uh, versus the residential car parks. 
Um, there are a couple of questions here about electrical equipment and what have you. So I might answer them and sort of try to bundle them up as best I can. Um, so is there air conditioning? It depends what residence you're in. Um, and can we bring a fan? You can. Um, with fans, we just ask that they uh, they meet all relevant Australia, relevant and current Australian standards. Um, and then when you're using them in your room, you're not overloading PowerPoints. It's just about safety, I guess. There, some rooms have ceiling fans where they don't have air conditioning and, and what have you. So unless you know specifically what resident you're going to and you'd like to email us to find out more, I suggest you wait until you move in so that you can see what it is that your room has, where, what direction it faces, what sunlight you get, all of those sort of things play a part. Um, what electronic devices are allowed in rooms? Um, so I'm not sure specifically what this relates to, but it depends again, if you're in a studio, you'll have a television. Um, aside from that, you're welcome to bring in your own TV. You have obviously got a lot of computers um and printers and things that people choose to have in their rooms all of the cooking equipment um, is supplied so whether or not you're in a share a studio edwards hall main hall you'll have kitchen facilities there to varying levels uh, but you will be able to prepare food um, in the main kitchen area so what we say is that we we ask that people don't take cooking equipment into their rooms. Um, and that's predominantly around safety and security as well. So it's, and just making sure that we're not setting off fire alarms and all those sort of things from smoke and, and things like that. So small fridges are permitted, absolutely. Um, and again, it's just meeting the relevant Australian standards. Just keep in mind that we don't have a lot of trolleys. Um, so whilst we're happy to, to lend them out to residents when they're moving in, um, small fridges are definitely um, a big item. So we suggest that you get support to bring those in just so you don't hurt yourself. Um, and yeah, the same things apply, I guess, with not overloading um, electrical boards and outlets, making sure that they meet the Australian standards. Jess, there were yeah. a few electrical items that we don't allow, like mm -hmm. um, portable air conditioning units. Are there any others you wanted to call out there? I think the best, there is sort of a long list, I guess, and well, not a long list. It's just based on an individual's safety and security. So my recommendation would be to review the student living standards um, because it actually details items in there and why they are prohibited um, and that includes things like candles because of naked flames mm. um, diffusers because of smoke all of the things that kind of can be of risk to an individual um, and we go through those in the student living standards awesome um okay so bikes Casey did you want a little talk a little bit about our bike hubs and our process for Callahan. Yeah. Hi. So on Callahan, um, each residence has a bike hub or in the case of the towers, there's a large bike hub that they all share that's centrally located. Um, so the towers ones is accessed by a card, but all the others you can request a key from us um, that you can have for the duration of your stay. You just return it with your other keys when you leave. Um, if you didn't want to put it in this, the bike hubs and you just wanted it um, for a short period, there's bi also bike racks um, outside, not only all of our residential buildings, but across campus, there is um, bike racks that you can secure your bikes to with your chain and things like that. Um, we do um, ask that you don't keep them in your residences just because um, if you're in a share, there's a lot of other residences, your other residents to consider. It's not a lot of space if everyone's got their bike in there. Um, and then the same in studios, it's not really a big enough space to have a bike as well safely and not blocking your exits and things like that. Um, so but there's definitely secure areas for you to keep them. And we do encourage the, you to bring them. Um, it's a great way to get around campus and it's great mm -hmm. for your health and your fitness um, and your mental health as well, staying fit and active. And when you're a student, you want to save as much money on petrol as possible. So that's always <laughs> a plus. Yeah, absolutely. All right, so question about ResFest, um, is an itinerary provided? 
So we'll be sending information out to all our residents very shortly with the ResFest calendar, just so you can know what to expect next week. Um, but additionally, if you need any support about a particular element during ResFest, then yes, absolutely. Check in with your RMs. Um, if you can't move in on the allocated date and be part of ResFest, will you still have access to meet with your IRM during? Absolutely. So I think, Kai, you're probably best placed, but my understanding is that, um, say, if you're in a tower, you might have floor meetings or you might have block buildings in other residences around once a week, are they? Yeah, so there's an engagement activity at least once a week on every residence. So each floor or block will have an engagement activity. This is where you get to meet your RM, or if you haven't previously, or if they haven't previously met you before, yeah, this is where you meet them the first time. Um, we do tend to, uh, I, as RMs, as a previous RMs, try to meet all our residents within one week of them staying there, um, just so we can get a familiar face and um, yeah, get to know you a bit better. Yeah, awesome. All right, Casey, the mailing address for residents. So for Callahan campus, it's 130 University Drive, Callahan 2308. If you want that in writing, we can send that to you by email. Um, you, if you would like to include your residents, you can, um, but you don't need to because the mail center lines it up according to your booking in your room. So they know that what residence you're in and you collect everyone's collecting it from the student living office anyway um and then for blue gum house it's um university of newcastle 10 chitaway road orimba new south wales 2258 yeah thanks casey yeah, and we did provide those address details in a um our move in email I'm trying to think when we sent that a couple of weeks ago so if you have a look back in your inbox I'm sure you've been inundated inundated with emails at this time of year um, but yeah if you have a look for our move in email that we sent around mid-January um, then you'll see those details as well so what are the rules in relation to COVID at the uni and in on-campus accommodation? Uh, so last year we had a vaccination mandate in place. That's not in place for 2023. Um, so we no longer, there's no longer the requirement to um, have a look at vaccination certificates or anything like that when people check in, which is great. Um, but what we do ask all our residents is just to be mindful of the community aspect. And if you are unwell, to have a test. Um, and if you are COVID positive, then you obviously isolate um, and just be mindful of those around you. Kai, how do sports teams work, etc.? Yep, so there's two different ways of team sports at the University of Newcastle. So there's one through your residential, your residence. So you will have like, let's say you're on South Tower, you have your South Tower sporting events where you verse other colleges as well. Um, so those sports can include soccer, basketball, mix. So they're women's soccer, women's can be mixed as well. Um, all those different sports as well. And then there's also sports through the forum as well. So they do a um, championship or a tournament as well through the forum that you can register to. Lots of opportunities. Um, all right, when will we get to know what our exact room number? So you'll find that out when you check in. Um, that will all, so your RM may reach out to you if you're a new resident um, in the lead up to move in day. However, they won't be able to, they won't disclose that information because they're not necessarily aware at this point. Um, but come check-in day, all of those details are confirmed and you'll be given an envelope with all of your key details and shown to your residents. Uh, how many holidays are there typically and can we stay in accommodation? Um, so not sure how specific we can be about the holidays. However, you're, you are able to stay on for the duration of your contract. So if you have a semester one contract, then you can stay on every day from your contract start date to your contract end date. Similarly, if you're on a standard stay contract, you move in in February, you move out in December and you can be here for every day in between. So if you, if we're talking about, um, you know, the mid-year break, for example, no, you don't have to move off if you're on a standard stay contract. You can stay in your room. Um, 
so fridges we've talked about yes you can um, as long as they meet Australian standards and we don't overload PowerPoints. Um, bikes we've talked about as well. So yes, we have the bike hubs on campus and just come and see the customer service team for any more information if you need it. Um, Kai, you might like to answer this one. Do people tend to use their own kitchen utensils and gear or does everyone usually share? I think it's, do they share or do they bring yep. their own? So depending on what kind of living environment you're in, so obviously there's shared living shared uh, rooms as well as uh, single rooms. So shared living environments like Everton and things, um, people tend to bring their own things. Um, I definitely recommend not to bring as much as possible only because we see a lot of double up in people and a lot of people sharing different um utensils as well if you do want to keep your own there is definitely a sp space to keep your own in your own closet in cupboards so yeah if you want to keep your own and use your own you can do that or if you want to share you can also do that as well and Kai, it might be a good um segue into talking about res shop uh yes so we have res shop on campus so we it's all um donated things from last year's residents that want that couldn't bring them with them um and they're all just donations to us and then we can give you there's a bunch of stuff like plates brand new plates, like the utensils, there's so much that you can buy just for like a dollar coin donation. So we re definitely recommend looking through that. Yeah, and that will take place on Callaghan campus uh, Thursday the 9th, I think is the date, um, in the West Tower common room. So yeah, as Kai, Kai mentioned, it's a gold coin donation and all proceeds go to charity. So it's a, it's a good way for us to close the circle, I guess, um, and residents, outgoing residents may or may not have used a particular item very much at all so they donate it um, for us to then be able to pass on to incoming residents. Kai, do we have to bring our own iron and ironing board? I would definitely recommend. Um, there is shared iron, irons and ironing boards but um, it's quite rare to find them I think because it's all on one floor or one block that has a shared iron and ironing board so if you definitely need to do iron your clothes a lot, we definitely recommend bringing your own. Great. How big are the closets and other dresses available? So again, it the size depends on what residence you're living in. Um, however, every room has access to a closet with hanging space and drawers. Um, so again, before you um you know, plan to purchase or bring in any other further equipment pieces uh, when you move in, suggest that you come in, have a look at what is there in place, and then you can work out what you might need to supplement it. Uh, Kai, sorry, I'm throwing a lot your <laughs> way, okay. but in terms of Edwards Hall Main Hall, um, which is the catered residences, um, so obviously knowing that they have this seven dinners a week in the dining hall. Um, what it what it's available in the kitchenettes in Edwards Hall? So each, I think around 13 to 15 residents share one kitchenette and the kitchenette mm -hmm. contains a fridge, freezer, a uh, boiling water unit or a kettle, um, uh, sorry, a toaster, and then as well as a microwave as well. So there's no cooking like a stove top or oven in there um, as you're provided dinners uh, every night. Um, so that's all that's available in the kitchenette there. Yeah, great. And I guess considering that it's breakfast and lunch we're preparing, um, and as I mentioned before, your our main hall residents are welcome to have a bar fridge in their rooms, um, and we tend to find that those sort of cold items, I guess, are, are popular for breakfast and lunch. And you're also more than welcome to bring your own like sandwich press and um, air fryer as long as you store it in the kitchenette as well um, when you use it um, in the in Edwards Hall catered. Yeah, so just not in your bedroom. <laughs> can family pets visit uh, so a lot of people choose to um, walk around Callahan campus especially and and um, Arimba campus as well because we they are largely bushlands great walking tracks we do see a lot of animals um, if your family pets would like to visit with your family members um, totally appreciate that we just ask that they stay outside so the only animals that are permitted inside are approved service or support animals um are there any opportunities to get a job on campus nat would you like to talk through that one 
There are so many opportunities to get a job on campus. Um, so let me talk you through a, a few different types of jobs that might be quite typical. Uh, the first are in our sort of retail and hospitality outlets on campus. So for example, we opened a new coffee shop right here within the student living precinct last year, and they're always looking to only hire student residents um, to work there. And there's lots of other retail outlets across campus that are always looking for great staff as well. Um, but it doesn't stop there. We also hire lots of our residents into our team, into our customer service team as casuals, into our facilities management team as casuals, especially at our sort of peak times throughout the year. Um, and then the great news is that the university is really, really invested in providing work opportunities that are related to the area that you're studying. And we call that work integrated learning. Um, so from this year, any commencing students, any new, new studying students um, will be expected to do a work integrated learning um, placement as a core course and the university is really opening its doors whether it's finance or marketing or education I mean the list really does go on um, so a really great source of finding out what jobs there are is literally if you just put into our website search jobs on campus that's the service that is specifically around um, student jobs and you'll get a really good lead on what's out there at the moment and that'll continue to be populated throughout the year as new opportunities come up. Great, thanks Nat. Um, does ResFest last for two weeks? Uh, pretty much, yeah, I think it is actually. I'm just trying to picture the calendar in my head. Um, so as Kai mentioned, we have the new residents that move in this weekend and then our returners join us on from Wednesday um, and the activities continue through to the following week. So there's a, there's a lot going on and, and a lot of opportunities to meet people um, and where you can, it's, and as Casey mentioned before, it's not always possible for everyone to arrive the day that their contract starts, but especially for our new residents, we do encourage you to arrive on the weekend if you can, just so that you can take advantage of all the opportunities there are. Are meal plans available for those in the towers? Absolutely. So if you're interested in a meal plan, um, you can contact studentliving at newcastle.edu.au and we can send you the form. Um, just because you live in a self-catered residence doesn't mean that you can't access the dining hall for meals. So absolutely. They're not included in the room price, but they are open to everybody. Um, Two questions. So I need a new student card or is mine from last year okay? Um, I missed what you said about not being able to move in on Saturday. Should I do that Sunday afternoon or Monday? So um, if you are a returning resident, you'd be moving in on Wednesday and you would already have your student ID card. If you're a new resident, but not necessarily a new student, you might also have your student card already. So your one from last year should be fine. Bring it with you when you move in, hand it over to the customer service team. They'll check everything for you and make sure that access is all, all okay. Um, and yeah, you shouldn't have any problems. And if you can't move in on Saturday, we're open 10 till two on Sunday um, and then business hours next week. Outside of that, if you can reach out to us and let us know, uh, studentliving at newcastle.edu.au, uh, then we'll be able to work with you to support your move in time and date. Uh, we did talk about facilities in share kitchens um, and just quickly you might like to wait until move-in day to see what others bring just bring the essentials we also have res shop that is open next week where you can purchase pre-loved items that ex-residents have donated uh, we just ask a gold coin donation uh, so yeah, there's a few different options, um, but I would bring the necessities with you when you move in. And then outside of that, you can work with your housemates on who would like to buy what or, or how between you, um, you'd like to broach that. With the shared apartments in the towers, can we use the enclosed balcony to dry our clothes, Kai? 
Yep, you're more than welcome to use those for with your clothes horse. Um, there's also drying facilities um, next to the washing rooms um, in each tower as well as in each um, residence as well, um, which is lockable in the towers. Um, but there's clothes horses in on like the other older towers, uh, older residences as well. Okay, great. Got a couple of questions around bed sizes. Um, so again, this does depend on the residence that you're moving into. So I would suggest that you reach out to the student living team if you're concerned about um, buying the right size linen, for example. Um, if you wanted to err on the side of caution, you could always buy a King single fitted sheet because then you know that that would fit on a single bed if you were likely to have a single bed. Um, there are both. So it, yeah, it really does depend on what residence you're in as to the bed size. Um, and if you are particularly tall and, and you find yourself in a single bed, then you can reach out and request a room move or have that discussion after you've moved in. Nat, would you like to talk about doctors on campus and medical yep. centres and what have you? Yeah, absolutely. Yes, we do have a health service on campus. It's a couple of minutes walk, maybe five at the most from here um, in the residence at Callahan, And that is a bulk billing, so free service for our students. Um, and in addition to sort of GP support, we also have a really fantastic um, array of mental health support and financial well-being. There's, if you have a look on our um, University of Newcastle website at the support services, you'll be able to see them all listed there. The one thing I'm not sure about Jess is um, GP presence at Arimba. They do have um, a, a student well-being area there. Yes. Um, and I understand that there was a doctor on campus last year. Uh, we would just need to, to double check that for our um, Blue Gum House residents. However, our RM down there is a returning RM, so she will have all of the information for those residents. Amazing. Yeah. Uh, when using the washing machine, do we bring our own detergent powder or liquid? Yes, you do. Um, so there's information on the student living portal about how you can um, activate your laundry account and that covers the cost of using the washing machine and dryer or dryer. Um, however, you do need to bring your own laundry detergent powder liquid and we find that people leave that in the dirty clothes basket and take it up and down as they go to the laundries. So it just becomes... Um, an added element in their dirty clothes basket, I guess. Um, do we recommend you bring your own vacuums? Um, Kai, did you want to answer that one? Yep. Um, so you can bring your own vacuums if you wanted to, um, as long as they're like what Jess said, uh, follow through the Australian standards. Um, however, we do provide vacuums for each block or floor on each camp, on each residence as well. Excellent. Um, so I'm just looking through the questions. Um, are there halal options offered in the dining halls? Absolutely. So we cater to uh, a number of different dietary requirements and or allergies. Um, so all we ask that you is that you reach out to the student living team in advance and let us know so that we can let the catering team know as well. Uh, Kai, what are the best ways to get into Newcastle City if I don't have a car? Um, so it's definitely that new space shuttle that we talked about earlier. So there's one near the the student accommodation here in the near North Tower. Um, right now it's running every an hour, but I think when university starts, like Nat said, it's, started, it's running every half an hour there. So it can drop you off um, here and then you can pick you up here as well. Excellent. A couple of questions about move-in time. So on Saturday it is at Callahan, it is from 9 till 4 p.m. Um, and on Sunday it's 10 till 2 down at Blue Gum House um, because you would have received information. However, you can reach out to the security team when you arrive and they can hand over your keys and show you to your residence. Um, outside of that, please just let us know. So check-in closes at 4 p.m. on Saturday. Um, and there's a question here around moving in on the 4th of January. I, I feel like you might mean the 4th of February. 
Um, and again, that's nine till four on Saturday. Um, what do we do if our residential mentor hasn't emailed us? Uh, don't worry because you, there'll be plenty of opportunities to meet them on Saturday. Um, as you, after you've checked in and you've got your keys, uh, you'll then be directed to your residence RM tent. Um, and then you'll meet all of the team there that looked af looks after your specific residence. So plenty of opportunities to meet them in, on your first day. Uh, if you've so submitted a photo, you haven't submitted a photo, that's okay. The Ask UON team will be here on Saturday to do that for you. It just means that we won't be able to load access onto that on the day. Um, so we'll give you a temporary card in the meantime. There's set meal times in the dining hall. So there's a few questions around the dining hall. Um, and what I will say is that we'll reach out to everyone that has a meal plan because they're either in a catered residence or have opted into a meal plan. We'll send you all the details about opening times and how to access. I saw a question before around accessing meals outside of the dining hall operating times because we know some people work. Um, or they might have classes until late. It isn't always possible to go within a short window. So we'll send a lot of that information to you um, before Saturday. So if you're in a catered residence or have a meal plan and you've opted in to have it from the day that your contract starts, for most of you, that will be Saturday night's dinner in the dining hall. Is breakfast cereal, et cetera, available for Edwards Hall Main Hall residents? Um, no, not at the moment. Um, so breakfast is a resident's responsibility. So what we do find is that with the facilities, the toasters and hot water taps and what have you in the kitchenettes, um, and people tend to eat as they're running to their first class of the day, um, so there isn't actually anything provided from student living in terms of catering for breakfast. Uh, how does the housekeeping mentioned on the website work? Uh, Casia, did you want to give the guys a bit of an insight into our cleaning processes? Yep. So the cleaners will clean the shared areas um, in like shared apartments. So they clean the bathrooms once a week. And then they also clean areas like um, the kitchen and the living area. It's a basic clean. Um, so like wiping surfaces, um, vacuuming or mopping floors and things like that. Um, so things like cleaning the oven and cleaning the microwave is a resident's responsibility as well as like the upkeep of the fridge. Um, and your own bedrooms are obviously your own responsibility as well. Um, there is an expectation that you're keeping it to a reasonable standard. They're not... Um, cleaning up after you like picking up belongings and things like that or they're not there to pick up rubbish that's left behind or food scraps or things like that it's so that you know in a shared environment there's a good standard of hygiene maintained um so you're still expected to like vacuum your own um bedrooms and things or if the floor gets messy in between cleans obviously take responsibility and clean it up um in the studio spaces um or like single occupancy kind of areas um the cleaners will clean the bathroom and then do the same surfaces in the kitchenette areas. They won't touch your bedroom part of the studio. Um, that'll be your responsibility to clean as well. Yeah, thank you. So there's a question here around, um, is there a way parents can contact someone if they've not heard from their child and they're worried? Um, and it does happen from time to time. We, we completely understand that. Um, however, we just ask that parents understand that there is a privacy element involved um, here. So we do have, when the office isn't open, we have the after hours duty officers that, that are on the same phone number as our customer service team during the day. So they will be able to take inquiries. They may not always be able to provide the answer, I guess, that some parents might be looking for. Um, however, our campus care team, who again, you can find um, by popping in campus care into the website, they're the ones that we direct parents to when, they, when there's a, 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 you know, quite a significant concern around an individual's well-being. Now, is there anything else you wanted to add to that? I think you covered that really well, Jess. Um, I would just say that 
I guess as part of that service, if you do contact our team, we're always very happy to pass messages on to your child. Um, it's then at their discretion as adults um, as to whether they want to make contact or not. And that was that privacy piece that Jess is talking about. Um, and so uh, we get inquiries from parents, I'd say as a team fairly regularly, but we are really careful about what we share um, on behalf of your of your child as they are our client essentially. Yeah, and I think that that crosses over into the finance world as well. Um, so we'll often get parents inquiring about paying an account or where an account is at and all of that sort of stuff without a, without a student's expressed authorization, which we have an authorization form for, um, we're unable to disclose certain details to parents or caregivers. And again, it just comes back to privacy. So we would need the student to permit um, a third party to be in contact with us, which many do, and it's totally fine. Um, we, it's just one of our processes that we do to help with privacy. And like Natalie said, that they are adults um, and we want, we want to maintain our relationship with them as well. Uh, what are some places that sell items like pillows, hangers, bed sheets? So I mentioned before that both Big W and Kmart are not very far away at all. Um, short bus trip and they're the best places locally. Um, there's also Katara, which is a big Westfield shopping centre, probably around 20 to 30 minutes drive. Um, so definitely suggest going there if you're looking for, for more substantial items or clothing and things like that. Uh, would we be able to receive grocery delivery, deliveries? Yes. Um, and the same goes for Ubers. Yes, you can absolutely have Ubers coming to the residence. Um, again, we think that's a, a, a good security option for traveling at night, especially. Um, and in terms of having food deliveries and what have you, just try and be as specific as you can as to your location. Um, and that they contact you when they arrive so that you can go and collect it. We sometimes see food deliveries sitting outside residence for probably longer than is safe. So always good to, to ask them to give you a call when they're on site so that you can collect it straight from them. Uh, can we direct an invoice to parents directly? Kai, would you like to answer that? Um, yes. So as just talked about before, we do require authorization for, to, to talk about any fine finances with parents, um, but we can uh, draft up an invoice, um, which is payable, but it will usually be only for a semester or a full year. We can't do invoicing for two weeks or three weeks or four weeks. We require a lump sum of either a semester or a full year. And there's another finance related question, Kai. Um, can you pay room fees in advance or are they usually paid weekly, fortnightly? So our regular direct debit schedule is fortnightly. Um, however, if you do want to opt in doing, doing an invoice, like I said before, you can do a, a single semester invoice or a full year invoice as well. Excellent. Uh, will we be offered a bed and a cupboard in our personal room? Yes, absolutely. Um, we supply all the main um, or essential items of furniture. So that's a bed, we supply a mattress protector, um, a desk, desk chair, cupboard, desk light. Guys, help me out. Um, <laughs> I think that's about it. Um, in a in a you know in a shared environment where you have a bedroom and then you have shared facilities. Obviously, um, when you're in a studio, you'll have all of that plus your own little kitchenette, which has the um, convection microwave cooktop fridge, kettle, toaster. <laughs> um, and there was a question about cooking in studios. Yes, uh, you can. As I mentioned, you've got uh, a kitchenette space. So as long as it's all safe and you have the um, extractor fan going and all of that sort of stuff, then absolutely you can cook in your studio. Um, can we send information about dining hall hours to those not on a meal plan? Absolutely, we'll do that once the um, initial move-in period has passed. Uh, however, if, you're, if you or your child is interested in a meal plan from Saturday, then I just encourage you to reach out to us um, via email or phone so that we can send you the form ahead of time. 
All right. Um, do people bring a surfboard? Casey, would you like to answer this? <laughs> Absolutely. So yeah, we have a lot of surfers because Newcastle's pretty great for surfing. Um, so, and you're welcome to keep those in um, your residence. And we just ask that um, if you can't fit them in the room, you're welcome to keep them in the common areas as long as you can be considerate of your housemates um, and you're not blocking like doorways, fire exits um, or any things like that. And don't keep them in stairwells and walkways um, just for a safety concern and consideration for other people wanting to move around. Um, some people do choose to keep them in their bedrooms. That's a bit more security, depending on the size of their room and what other items they have in there. Um, yeah, so you're more than welcome to have your surfboard. Excellent. Um, for the towers, is everyone allocated a specific room or just a room number? Um, so every bedroom is private and has a door with a lock. So regardless of what is within your bedroom, in terms of if you're a studio of, or if you're in a shared apartment, um, you have a specific room within an apartment. Uh, a stove tops, electric convection or gas. So we don't have any gas cooking appliances here. It's just electric. Um, are we allowed to stay? Oh, allowed to stay in accommodation during the summer vacation. So we have a separate contract period. So once, um, so the second half of the year, we'll reach out to current residents and ask them if they're interested in applying for summer stay, which is essentially an extension of your current contract and covers you over the December, January period. So lots more information about that. Um, 165 for linens and all, are they weekly or are they monthly? So that's a one-off cost. Uh, we don't hire out linen. So we do have some linen packs available for purchase, which you can do on the portal. That's a one-off cost. And then you own that, um, those pieces. It's not sort of a per week or per month cost. Uh, Jess, I might, just, mm. just on that um, one, is it worth going through what's in those packs? Cause I'm not sure that a pillow is. Correct. It's everything apart from a pillow, basically. Um, so you'll have a towel, pillow slip, sheets, quilt, quilt cover. Um, and the reason that we don't have pillows there is because they're very, it's a very personal select, you know, personal choice, I guess. Yeah. Um, and it's not a one size fits all. So we find that people, most people can make do for the first night and then they might pop over to the shops to grab their pillow of choice. Um, but yeah, I encourage you to jump onto the portal and purchase a linen pack if, um, if that's of interest to you. Um, microwaves in Ed Edwards Hall kitchenettes. Yes, there are. Um, if you opt for the university dinner meals but can't make the time, if, oh, so I mentioned that earlier, yes, we'll provide some information around how you can access your meals before or after the dining hall opening times. Um, sorry, I'm just trying to answer as many of these as I can uh, within the six minutes that we have left. Um, do you have to notify student living if you want to leave your accommodation? No, you don't have to at all. So. Um, it would only be in the case of an emergency that would reach out and ask you to confirm whether or not you were on campus at that time. Um, but outside of that, we suggest that you keep in touch with your RMs, your housemates, just from a personal security and safety perspective so that people don't wonder where you are. Um, but no, you don't need to let student living know. Um, what are the rules about people staying overnight? So this is, comes down to the, the guest registration process as well. Um, and more information on that can be found in the student living standards as a guest section. Um, so I probably wouldn't do it justice in this environment, but I do encourage you before you have anyone to stay um, that you do go in and read that. And, and a lot of it comes down to just um, being considerate of those around you as well and how many people you're allowed to have over at any one time. Um, Meal options, yep. So reach out to us if you'd like to organize that before Saturday. Is laundry, coin, pay, or student card, etc. Kai, did you want to provide a bit more information around that? 
Yep. So the laundry machines, which is $2.50 for a wash or $2.50 for a dry, are through a website and you can register your account on there. There's some information on our website on how to register your account. Um, so yeah, it's pretty easy. You just scan a QR code and you log into your account and you can just purchase through there. You can load some cash up on uh, some uh, credit on there as well. Yeah, great. Um, so if talked about specific rooms and room numbers um, and you'll find out all of that information on Saturday when you arrive. Um, my parents and I are going to split the rent. Can we both direct debit into the account or only one of us, Kai? Um, so we only require one. We can only have one card on the direct debit. Um, so you can do a manual payment, which is every four. Not, you can guys, you can take turns and maybe doing the manual payment, which you can input your own credit card details. Or if you want to do an invoice like discussed but earlier, we could do a single semester for one half and then a single semester for the other person as well. Yeah, awesome. Uh, for people staying the night in your accommodation, are they are there overnight packs, mattresses, et cetera, for guests? No, they're not. So you as the resident are fully responsible for the guests that you have on site. Um, and if they are staying over, then you're also responsible for providing bedding, et cetera, for them. Uh, will there be a catch up on the compulsory consent labs if you're not planning to move in into the 10th of February? Kai, can you give us some insight into that from your experience? Yep. So usually there's a catch up uh, session for all the residences a few weeks after for all those residents who may move in a bit late. Um, but your, res your residential mentor, your RMs will be in touch as well as the student living support team um, to let you know if you've missed your consent labs and required to do in the catch up. Excellent, thank you. Uh, so move in day, where do we go first? So again, if you're Blue Gum House, you would head to security. If you are in the North, South, East or West Towers or Everett House, you will come to West Tower. And if you're in International House, Barry Hinnaban, Edwards Hall, Self Catered or Edwards Hall Main Hall, you would go to Edwards Hall on Saturday. So again, I encourage you and information about getting your keys and that sort of thing has all been provided in the move in emails. Um, and you should have received two of those in the last couple of weeks. So I encourage you to go back and read through those because they're full of lots of helpful information. Um, are there compulsory things that are required to commit to in Res Life Res Fest? Kai or Nat, would you like to respond to that? I can. So yes, there's um, your consent labs, which are compulsory. Um, they're a requirement from us um, to live here on campus. Um, we do, we no other events are required, but we do definitely recommend giving those a go just because it's a great place to meet new people. Well Excellent. said, Kai. I wouldn't add to that, but um, yeah, get involved, guys. It'll be a good couple of weeks of programs. Kai, just quickly, is there a girl or mixed rugby league team? Um, so depending tag. on the season, so it can differ every year. Um, the like the residential um, sporting can involve um, league tag, or but they usually it's mixed touch. Um, and then there's always a mixed touch tournament in through uh, new uh, sorry through the forum. Great, thank you. Um, and you're very welcome. Um, we're glad that you found this helpful. Um, and we really look forward to meeting you as well. And to our last comment, yes, we will. This is being recorded um, and we will pop it up on the webinar page and the Student Living um, website tomorrow um, and also share with share with you all as well. So thank you again. We're really excited to see you over the next week or so. Um, and again, our web, our website, our email address, studentliving at newcastle.edu.au if we can help with any last minute questions or um, you know, provide any other level of support before you move in. Thank you very much and enjoy your evening. Thanks everybody. Bye. Bye.